What's going on, fellow bangers? Ian here with for Carfax Cow. We're back with Sean after a long time of not having sets and stuff. Oh shit! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do deck profile for Sean's uh, was this Gabriel deck? Yes. So let's go. Let's okay. get into this. So, so you start with Black Candle Azrael because the new the new starter doesn't. Uh, okay, well the main thing is that Gav Gavro doesn't have ways of getting cards into hand easily, except for a battle keep it Osseo, and I was forced to cut that, <coughs> so I'm forced to play this. The other one is like, just call stuff from the damage zone when it heals off uh, to the drop zone, so that was not that useful since Gavro and some of your other units already do that, like Zabania and Harut and stuff like that, so uh, I think the hand, being able to take cards to your hand is more important, even though it costs a counter blast and you break even, basically. Uh, so I, I decided to keep with Azrael. Uh, triggers, I, I just run four heals. Well, I guess I should put it upside down. Okay, so I play four heals because of G Guardians. And because uh, the deck uses, the deck goes through cards really quickly. So if you can return, sometimes you want to return the heal triggers anyways. Um, so they help thicken the deck. So it's not that a bad idea to play four, I guess. Uh, Deck plays five crits. Uh, five crits because um, first of all I like the odd number, but second of all, um, originally I wanted to go with only four crits, uh, which would which would be totally okay. But then because of how the deck works, like with uh, uh, the Soul Blast engine now, I decided to put one critical hit angel so I can put um, it into the soul during the main phase and uh, make use of the soul basically. Um, it's just easier to get this in than to have this sit on the field into the battle phase and then insert it to the soul kind of thing. So this is this has its own use for when you want to set up for like the next turn or whatever or your opponent's just, turn. Stuff or if like you have an ATK that. line, make 21. Yeah, stuff like that. So options. Yeah, uh, I chose to play uh, seven sta seven stands. So I play I play four Rathrosses, um, which is the most broken stand in the game or some shit. Other than the fucking pixie lit, lit whatever. Yeah, but but this is this is easier to use and overall just more broken in that sense because it's easier to use. Um, and then I use I play two of the new stands. So the stand triggers effect is rescue one, a generation break one, uh, counter blast one, put this into the top of your deck, and you have the of the battle this unit boosted, you may pay the cost and if you do, you shuffle your deck, you heal a damage and then you take a damage and then you perform rescue so you do a damage check so your triggers go off. Uh, I play 7 stands because um, in my testing, crits do not work very well. Um, well, it works with uh, rescue but the problem is that stands work better with rescue so that's something that you have to take into consideration. Uh, which is also why like the Nocio decks play 12 stands now. Um, because it just works better with rescue, and uh, this thing, uh, this thing um, can return triggers. So it returns itself to the deck, and then even if you check nothing, and then your Gavriel rescue goes off, you still have a chance of checking these. So these things are pretty good, and uh, stand triggers overall because these things uh, proc a damage, a, a damage like not say check, but card enters the damage zone. So your broken hearts and your Pegasi and whatever will gain power. So during the battle phase, so that's it's pretty good, and it also helps to uh, prop uh, Black Seraph Gavriel's plus 2k to 2 units once when you use these in the battle phase. So I just gotta ask, since it might be wise to consider, when this goes to like 1 or 2, what do you think is gonna happen to change the lineup? When this goes to 1, this goes to 4, I'll play 5 stands, and then uh, I'll probably go with more ch uh, testing before I, I put in more um, Crit stand triggers or draw, uh, sorry, or crits. But for the time being, I was thinking if when when this thing gets banned and then these become these these become five stands only, I will swap it into the sense where I'll have seven crits instead of seven stands. Oh yeah. So that's what I was planning on doing. But I need to do more testing, and only if and when Refrost gets hit. So for right now, I don't have to think about it because it's. I just want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, it's a problem, but it's not like NA's abusing it yet or something. So I play four of the new perfect guards because uh, it's Angel Feather. You don't. You don't Really, okay, you kind of need the unflipping in the early game if you use too much, like I do, with the way I play the deck anyways, but uh, these things will uh, help a lot for a Gavriel deck. So its effect is it's a normal perfect guard, but you, it, can only, it can only guard a Vanguard, like all the G perfect guards. And uh, Generation Break 1, Rescue 1, when this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, you may counter blast 1, 
then if you have a uh, it, it, itself like a persona copy in the damage zone face up, you may pay the cost of counterblast one, and then you may heal a damage and take a damage. So you can heal the counterblasted damage and take a damage, and perform a rescue check, basically. So. Uh, it procs your Generation Break 2 for Gavra once, it procs your Broken Heart once, and it can potentially proc triggers during your opponent's uh, attacking phase without actually taking damage, so that's good. And uh, the, the only downside is that uh, because you have to have one in the damage zone, if you want to use this effect, technically you only have three perfect guards in that sense. But uh, you can, after the after you use three, you can always grab the last one and use it, so it, it, it doesn't, it's just a bonus having it there. Um, but the other thing is, uh, I think the thing to, to note is that if you have one in the damage zone and you guard with one, you may actually counter blast the, itself and you'll still get the effect off and you can heal it off if you want. Um, because uh, it already met the requirements of having the thing face up when you paid for the cost. So you can actually counter blast it, in case people didn't know that. Uh, I played three stride assists because... Um, uh, stride assist, not much to say. You kind of want to uh, ride Gavrel first of all, and second of all, um, uh, I, I, I thought of cutting this more, but 3 was the optimal number because I cut my grade 3s from 8 to 7, because I needed space in the grade 1s and the grade uh, 2s, so I had to stick with the 3, um, that's basically it. Uh, I said earlier that I cut the battle Cupid Nauseos into 2, and these are the 2. Uh, I used to run 3 because they used to synergize very well with the deck. It still does, um, the downside is that I lose ability to gain cards into my hand uh, at will, uh, easier. Um, but I had to make space for other things, so I had to actually just cut the battle cupid. And the thing is that you don't really want you don't really want to call it to the rear guard circle, so it's like a shit booster, like your perfect guards. Uh, speaking of boosters, speaking of boosters, I play a. Uh, uh, 3000 Ray Pegasus. I don't play 4 because I had to make space for like other shit that you'll see later. Uh, I still stuck with 3 because Raphros is still at 4, so you can still abuse it even in the front row or whatever. And it's a good first ride even though there's only 3 and you only have 2 left if you ride one. It's usually the first ride I ride if I have like 3 different great ones in my hand because I want the other great ones. They're more important than these things in a sense now. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I play two Nurse of Smash Heart, so this is where my soul goes. Goes um, because I play Smash Heart, I cannot play very many Zabanias or Zabanias at all, and Raziel's. Uh, I chose to run Smash Hearts because my triggers do not run draws, and Age of Feather has no way of gaining hand advantage without draw triggers uh, and drive checking. So this thing, so this thing's effect is uh, it's not even Generation Break One; it's once per turn though. It's so plus one when a card's put in your draw zone from your damage zone, you may draw a card if you pay the cost, and that's. It. It's a 5k and uh, it's okay even though like if you put this behind a 9k you have a 14k it's not the worst because you can gain power with the with, with Gavrel so it's it's a it's a good card. I recommend you play this. If you don't play this, you're pretty screwed sometimes. And I play one of this drill modern nurse thing because uh, it's a free unit. So its effect is generation break one when this unit splits the drop zone from your damage zone. Call this card to rearguard circle, and then if it was healed off by a rescue effect, this unit gains three thousand power. So it makes a ten k booster if you use like uh, Gavrel's ability or something like that. So yeah, um, I do not play. Z the Malik, um, this thing. Where is it? People might like, ask why I don't play this card. I don't play that card because uh, the card, the card honestly doesn't fit in the deck. Like it, it fits in the deck. It's just more along the lines of I don't have the space first of all, and it's and because it's a Gavrel deck, you when you call it once, there's no way it's gonna go back to the damage zone to use it another time. And it's and if I'm only gonna play at one, then it's useless. If I play at any more, I have to cut other things like Smash Hearts, which are too important, or like this. And I've already done the testing. It's just not worth playing that Mali in Gavrel, or at least with the way I play it. So onto Great Tours, I play two Black Slice Harut, which uh, it's just your on boost Amber Clone that calls a unit from the damage zone on boost, and that's it. Uh, it synergizes very well with the Stride Rough. Uh, Strike Gavrel because you can uh, put cards into your damage zone during the battle phase, and it makes a feel, I guess. So I play the obliga obligatory four Nurse of Broken Hearts. Uh, your defense engine and your bait engine people always hit this thing, these things, even though. To be fair, they kind of don't really matter in the deck anymore, even though even if they die in a sense almost. But yeah, it's it's good with Refros, so you still may as well run it. And 
it's good with the other rescue things uh, on your opponent's turn. So I choose to play two uh, treatment nurse. Uh, I found these. At first, I thought these things were like pretty shit because they were on hit. But I found out that they put a lot of pressure, especially when you run seven stand triggers because um. So it, yeah, so it stands itself. So its effect is generation break one on Rayguard Circle, and this unit attack hits a Vanguard. Choose a card from your damage zone, heal it, and take it and rescue one damage. So you take one damage and. Uh, it also works very well with the Stride Gavrel because if you take a damage during battle phase, it will gain like 2,000 power. If you hit a stand trigger, it's now 16, so pretty good, right? Uh, it provides a lot of on hit, and even though it doesn't gain power on its own, uh, Gavrel fixes that, and you have the ponies to fix that too. So it's it's a very good card, and it's another. It's what the way I play. People start hitting it as much as they hit Broken Heart, so it's 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 pretty legit to me. So I play one Zabania because uh, I don't have the soul for this, honestly. Uh, I play one only because was, this is the only other way to free cards from the damage zone. Uh, to call to Rayguard Circle other than Gavrel and, uh, and uh, Harut. Yeah, so so basically the effect is generation break one, card loss one, soul loss one. Choose a, a hand from, a card from your hand, place into your damage zone, and then choose a card from a face-up card from your damage zone and call it to Rayguard Circle. And then only if you have a Gavrel Vanguard, of course. And uh, this unit gains 2,000 power, and then you perform one rescue. So you get to heal your counterblaster damage and take a damage. And you, if you get a stand trigger, you put on this thing. It seems devastating, but it's not worth it because you, it's, you're checking one, and you play five crits. So like, if you check a stand, it's completely useless. So although its effect is generally so blast one, it's just not worth it to me. It's just there as a tech and. My my soul is allotted to the uh, Smash Hearts more than it is to this thing. So, yeah, this thing's not that good. I don't know why people play three or four. I, I really don't. It's it's junk unless you play a lot of crits or something. Uh, I play Laser Clutch with Kale. This is the Great One version of the Drill Moderners. It's literally the same thing. Uh, generation Break One when it's placed in a drop zone from Rigor, uh, from Damage Zone called the Rigor Circle, and if it's called by a rescue, oh sorry, if it's healed by a rescue, uh, ability gains 3k. So these two are actually anti-Diablo in a sense, where if you guard with your G Guardian, you get to call them out, and then you can retire them from Diablo's ability, and then you can continue guarding. So it, it really screws over Diablo, so I chose to play 1-1 one, one each, and it makes a free feel. Uh, I play one Poco for the Link Joker matchup, um, because I have no way of putting cards back into my deck. I want to end the game as quickly as possible, so Poco makes a very good choice. Uh, if I'm not against Link Joker, then it's completely useless. I always heal it off or something. Um, but yeah. So I play uh, I play uh, for Gavrel, um, because it's a Gavrel deck. And uh, <coughs> Gavrel is... Was is, is in fact better now than it was before because of the rescue units and uh, like the perfect guards and stuff because you can proc these things on the uh, uh, opponent's turn better and the other thing is that with how the generation break two works because I used to play Harutz to um, uh, make more aggro attacks even if I don't stride with the GB two with Refrosters and Harutz uh, I have more of an incentive to do so now because of the, all the other rescue mechanic that the deck has received from the set. Uh, and then my last grade threes, I just played three Calamity Flames. Um, I did not want to play the the the, the one that counter blast one, soul blast one because I I already have problems with soul. I don't really need that, and I didn't want to play the pony because uh, I have the grade two, and I thought these would make better regards because of the fact that I still have four Raffrosters first of all, and uh, they they do make quite a lot quite good lines with uh, black uh, black Seraph Gabriel. Uh, for the strike deck, I play one Uriel. <coughs> I rarely ever use this. I only use it when I know the person needs to take damage. It's just there. If not, it's completely useless to me. I never ever first stride it. Or unless I have not enough damage, basically. Then I just do it. Uh, I play one Sabreeze. This, this is for the Poco. And uh, it's for the Great Stuck in because this is a generation deck, right? And to couple the Sabreeze, I play one Zakario. This is my first stride for the most part, unless I've got enough damage. And I flip up the Sabreeze with this card for the for the most part. So Zakario is your Fighters Collection card, and its effect is uh, Card Blast 1 choose a face-up card from your G's turn it face-up. So it opens GB2 for Gavrel. And uh, until, the turn, uh, until the end of the turn, if you have a face-up damage, all of your regrets in the front row gains 3,000. And if you have 5 or more damage, this unit gains 10,000, basically. So it's okay, it's just to open GB2, honestly. 
Uh, I play for Black Seraph Gavriel. Um, so this is your new boss card. This is probably one of the most broken shits ever. Uh, so its effect is GB2 once per turn, combo plus one, choose a face down card named Black Seraph Gavriel and flip it face up. Uh, and then <coughs> this unit gains two abilities. The first one is when a card is placed into your damage zone during your battle phase, choose two of your units and those units gain 2000 power each until the end of the turn. And so these, uh, the first effect synergizes well with Harut itself and uh, whatever things that enter the, the battle, uh, the damage zone during the battle phase. The second ability is uh, Rescue Two. At the end of the battle, this unit attack the Vanguard. You make you heal two damage, and then you will take back two damage with Rescue Two. Uh, so it's basically five drive checks. You basically unflip one, and uh, it actually makes for a very devastating game, game ender. So when people sometimes when people are like three damage, you can probably end the game with Gavra. Even if even if it's not a restanding Vanguard, which is which makes it pretty good. Um, you have five drive checks, right? Yeah, and if the stand trigger, you make six, like the uh, the one I showed earlier. So I play four Raphael. Um, it's just there to slow down the game if I really need to. But otherwise, I rarely ever do use Raphael. But sometimes I do find a need in using all four Raph Raphaels. So they just heal a damage. So that's basically it. And because they heal a damage, they go well with the smash hard. So pretty good. So I played. Uh, I played. Sorry, cut off there. So, did you say you play three? Yeah. Uh, Surreal's. Uh, yeah. I play five G Guardians in total. So, Surreal's. Surreal. I play five Surreal. I play one. Uh, or or feel and one. Uh, Dismal. So I'll split from here first, I guess. I play the Dismal to protect Rigor as I really need. But sometimes I really need Broken Hearts, even though I don't really care anymore. So I play that, and yes, resist. Uh, just to defend the Broken Hearts permanently for the turn. I played this because it's a free 20k shield. Sometimes I just need the 20k shield. So I just play it. Uh, I, I, and then I played three Surreals. The reason I played this at one instead of like four Surreals or something is because uh, the other thing is that Surreals only have 15k shield. So if you're not at GB2 or you don't have Broken Hearts or whatever at GB1, these things will not guard as far as much as these things if you already push the 4 damage, right? And stuff like that. Uh, although theoretically, if you already have GB2, Surreal will guard for 17k uh, minimum uh, instead, and this thing is 20, so it's essentially the same number in that sense. So Surreal is your new guardian, it's the fact is uh, Carvalos 1, when it's placed on Guardian Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at the top card of your deck, put it at the bottom or the top, and then you may cho then you choose a card from your damage zone, heal it, so you can choose the face, uh, the counter blast of damage and heal it, then you take a damage. So these things will proc your GB2 once, or you'll proc your Broken Heart, and it's a rescue, so you'll proc triggers. So heal triggers will go off, stand triggers will go off, crit triggers, whatever will go off. So they're your like, number one guardian. So I chose to play 5 even though I don't have any legions or anything because I wanted the option of playing it. And honestly, I would not have to go through all my offensive strides that are not G Guardians before I would deck out anyway. So there's, there's, so I have the option of playing 5 G Guardians right now. So that's basically all I do with the deck. Alright, so that's the deck profile guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this with someone who you think would enjoy it. And we'll see you in the next video. Be sure to step the occasion then. Bye! I'll call my mom, she called me.